it's Deja Yetmer from CrochetOverAfter.com and right now I'm going to do a single crochet tutorial from beginning, not quite to end because we're not doing an actual project, but I'm going to show you how to single crochet from your foundation chain all the way through an entire row, how to turn your row, how to work into the first stitch, the last stitch, the middle of your row. We're going to do it all in this tutorial. As you may see from my other tutorials, I have all of these broken into separate parts so that way if you don't need this whole tutorial if you're learning and you have most of it down but you might forget how to single crochet into the beginning of a row you can find that tutorial and go straight to it if this is your first time crocheting this tutorial is going to show you how to do all of the single crochets in every single way when you're working in a row so let's get started okay to begin your single crochet you need to first make a slip knot in your foundation chain. So to make a slip knot, I always hold my yarn. I just twist it on itself, reach through the center loop, and pull my working yarn. And I'm keeping my tail short just so you can see it. Usually, I would make a much longer tail that I would, um, so it would be easy to weave in when I'm done. But I'm keeping it short so you can see where it's at. So I pull that working yarn that's attached to my ball through my loop, and I just pull it tight. And then I get a nice sliding slip knot. I'm going to place that on my hook and I grab the working yarn to pull my slip knot all the way to my hook. And then I'm going to begin my foundation chain and I'm going to make a foundation chain of 11 chains. So to begin your foundation chain you're going to take your yarn and you're going to wrap it from back to front and it always goes this way. It always goes back to front when you're doing what's called a yarn over or you'll see YO is the abbreviation in patterns. So to pull my loop that I just yarned over through, I'm going to point my hook down at my stitch, and this is going to help it slide easily through the loop that's on my hook. Now I'm going to do another yarn over for the next chain and show you that if I have my, point, my hook pointing up, I'll lose my yarn, I'll get caught on my loop. If I point it towards myself, I'm still going to get caught. When you point your hook down at your stitch, it slides easily through your loop. Saves a lot of frustration. Then, another thing that you're going to notice after I yarn over again, I pull my hook through and then I push my hook all the way so that my loop rests on the shaft of my hook. The shaft is the barrel. That's the big consistent size of your hook. That's the same size that's printed on your hook. So I always make sure that my loops are the size of my shaft by pushing my hook all the way there. What that does is it creates an even foundation chain. I do that for all of my stitches actually and it creates nice even stitches. So as I work I also pull on my foundation chain and I keep an even tension on my tail. And this all creates a nice even consistent stitch throughout my project. So I have, let's count how many foundation chains I have so far. They look like the letter V stacked on top of each other, so I count each V. I have one, two, three, four, five. And then I have the loop on my hook. I don't ever count this as a chain or a stitch. This is just what I'm working with, so it's the working loop. It's never counted as a stitch. So I have five, I need six more, so I take my yarn, go back to front, point my hook down, hold onto my chain, and pull through. Then push the hook back to your shaft so that the loop is on the shaft, and yarn over again. So it's going to become an easy, consistent thing once you get used to doing it. And you notice um, when I let go of my foundation chain to work other stuff, I put my finger on this stitch and it kind of keeps my chain because you see if I yarn over and I'm not holding on to it it just wants to go everywhere so I use this extra finger I hardly ever hold the hook with it I use this extra finger to hold that in place so when I yarn over my foundation chain doesn't go with it I pull through again yarn over hold on to my my loop point down and pull through Let's see how many I have now we have one two three four five six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm going to do two more. One and two. So you see I have a nice 
consistent foundation chain because I always made sure that my loop went to my shaft and I kept nice tension. Now keeping tension with this part of your yarn is going to ensure that the loop on your shaft stays a good size because if I don't keep tension on my working yarn when I pull I can pull this nice and loose if I wanted to and I can make really loose chains I could sit here and make them really big sometimes a pattern will call for that for you to chain loosely um, but most of the time you want to keep a pretty consistent even chain the size of your loops alright now we're going to begin our first single crochet into our foundation chain. Now the reason that I made 11 chains, it's kind of a weird odd number, well when we turn we always skip the first chain, technically the last chain that we made, we skip it when we start our single crochets. And the reason that we skip that very first chain of our row, or the last chain of our foundation chain that we made, is because we need the height of that chain to make a consistent row. And I'm going to show you what that means. So usually your pattern will say beginning in the second chain from your hook or it'll say single crochet in the second chain from your hook. So that just means skip this first one. Remember this loop does not count. Skip that first one and insert your hook into the next foundation chain. Now you have a choice of where you want to insert your hook. You have three loops technically. You have your V, which is your stitches on the front, and then you have your bottom bump, this little hor um, vertical line that you see running that's going up and up and down. You can either insert your hook just below this one loop in the back. You can insert it through that loop and your bottom bump and catch two loops. You can insert your hook in the bottom bump, turn it over and actually go through this bottom bump. You have a lot of choices where you want to insert your hook. The bottom bump gives a really nice bottom um, looking foundation because you're going to have these V's that will be the actual bottom part of your project which is quite nice looking but it takes a lot of extra work to do this bottom bump and if you're going to seam or if you're going to put any kind of edging around your work it's not necessary only if you're going to keep this actual bottom row your actual bottom row of your project which usually isn't very likely I usually just end up going through this one loop it's the easiest to grab it's the easiest to work into um, trying to grab this and the bottom bump can sometimes get a little tedious so I usually just go for this back loop so I will and this that's the one that I'm going to show you now is I'm going to insert my hook through just this loop and then I'm going to yarn over and what I like to call I like to say that this is a layover more than a yarn over you're still coming from back to front but it's not really a full yarn over and this confuses people because you think you might need to wrap it around all the way to get a full yarn over. So I like to say layover for the first one because you're just laying it over your hook. And then I turn my hook down to catch the yarn and pull it through that loop. And then you notice that I slide my hook so that my loops rest on my shaft. That's going to give me consistent stitches. Now I'm going to yarn over again. And this is more of a yarn over. It goes all the way around from back to front. Again I'm going to point my hook down so that I can slide easily through my stitches. And I've just made my first single crochet. So you're going to look for your next stitch to enter into. If it's hard to see, you look for your V's. Where is your next V? You can see your next V is right there. So I'm going to insert into that next V, push through, lay over, or as the pattern will say, yarn over, pull up your loop. This is called pulling up a loop. So you might see that written also in patterns. It'll say yarn over and pull up a loop. Then I yarn over from back to front again and turn my hook down. And notice that I grab right here on my stitches. It kind of helps me to pull my loop, my hook through also. I do it that way. Some people can just hold on to over here and work their stitches nice and easy. I always like to grab where I'm pulling my hook through 
because it kind of keeps my stitches even more nice and consistent and even. So you see that I just did another single crochet. I'm going to find my next V. You can always turn it this way if it's hard for you to tell where to go next because your V's are a little bit easier to see. You can see that my next V is right here. So I, And you can also kind of pull. If you pull on your stitch you'll see the hole where you need to insert your hook next. So I insert it through and I lay over, pull up a loop, yarn over back to front, pull that through. My next stitch, you can see that little hole right there. Sometimes using chunky yarn and a bigger hook makes these stitches a lot easier to see. When I taught my daughter to crochet, that's what I used and it was a lot easier for her to see where to go next because all of these holes are very exaggerated in bulky or chunky yarn and it was a lot easier for her to hold a bigger hook so if you're teaching a young child you might want to do that or just anybody trying to learn if you're having trouble with small yarn and small hooks go up a size go up to a bigger size it's easier for you to see what you're doing and you might have more success so you see that I have three more chains left so I'm going to insert into the next one lay over pull up the loop yarn over and sometimes when you're making your foundation chain this very last chain can be difficult to see because you might have made it slightly tight you can tell it's a little bit tighter than the rest of mine if you're not sure, if you think that might be part of your slip knot and you're not sure if you're supposed to be working into that, stop and count your stitches. That's why I did a small amount of stitches so that I could count them easily. So I like to start backwards from where my hook is and I'll look for my V's. You can turn it this way so you can see your V's better. So you see I have this on my hook so I don't count that, but I count this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine. So I have nine stitches and I should have ten because I chained eleven and I skipped one of my chains which makes ten single crochets. Now you can understand why I did eleven. So I put my hook through there, pull up that loop, and finish my single crochet. Now I have one row completed. And you can see over here that little loop here is where I skip that first chain and what it's doing is it's providing a space so that this first stitch isn't squished down and I'm going to show you because when we turn our work you always turn after every row I'm going to show you how to work into all of these stitches on this next row so you can see you always turn and you always chain one this is only for single crochet for other stitches you're going to do different amount of chains but for a single crochet you're going to chain one and that's to make sure that your height is correct. If I didn't chain one and I just started single crocheting row after row my project on the edges were, would be shrunk down. That chain one allows my first single crochet to be the same height as the rest of my single crochets. So it's very important to do that chain one. Now where do I insert my hook for my first stitch of my row? What you can do is if you're not sure, if it's looking a little strange, because you can see it looks very muddled over here, it's kind of, it doesn't look quite the same as the rest of my stitches, you can always look for your V's. Turn it on its side and look for your first V. This is my chain that I just did, and there's my first V. So I know that I need to insert into that V. You're always going under the two loops. You can also see there's a little hole, a little space. When you have the chunky or bulky yarn, that space is huge. It's very easy to see, but on smaller yarn, it's a little bit more difficult. But you're going to insert your hook, and if you're a beginner, I always say turn and look at your V. Make sure that you only have two loops besides your working loop, but two loops from your V on your hook. Because when you're new and you're putting your hook through, it's very easy to accidentally catch an extra loop. So if you look now, I have one, two, three. Very easy to do that. So you only want two loops, which is your V, on your hook. 
and then you're going to lay over and pull that through and don't stop here to finish your single crochet always pull your loop so that your hook is on top of your work if you stop here and you finish your single crochet you're going to have very crunched down stitches always pull your loop all the way up pull your yarn all the way up to the top of your work so your hook is parallel with your work then yarn over and point your hook down and pull through you're going to get used to pointing your hook down it's become second nature you're going to grab twist and pull it's just going to be something that's easy to do but when you first start out you gotta remember to do that and you will once you get stuck a couple of times you'll remember like oh wait I need to turn my hook next stitch look for the hole you can pull your stitches apart and you'll see that hole where you need to insert your hook or look for your V turn sideways where's my next V right there so I need to put my hook through there and make sure I only have two loops on my hook lay over pull up pull it all the way up so I'm parallel yarn over point down and pull through and always push your hook to your shaft get your loop on your shaft so you have nice even stitches again for the next one I can just pull apart and look for that hole there's my hole I put it through check if you need to for your two loops lay over pull up go parallel yarn over notice I'm on my shaft with my loop so always push your hook all the way so that your loops are on your shaft point down pull through push to my shaft so I'm going to do these next ones at normal speed so you can see kind of how once you get used to it how easily it can flow and I do the knife grip I don't do the pencil grip so it's like I'm cutting steak back and forth knife there's also the pencil grip where people hold it like you're writing a pencil. Either way is correct, whatever is more comfortable for you. I'm going to go all the way to the last stitch so you can see how to find that stitch and work it. I always tell beginners to start with small stitch projects. That way after each row you can count how many stitches you have because it's very easy to lose or miss a stitch when you're first beginning. So now I've done nine stitches. I can always count to make sure. So I turn it. I always like to look for the V's. It's the easiest way for me to count because they're easy to see. So I have, let me move that out of the way. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this right here was my turning chain, so I don't count that. That's what that chain one at the beginning of the row is called. It's called a turning chain because you turned your work and you chained. You might see that in a pattern as a TCH abbreviation. Some people don't see that often, so they don't realize that's what that is, but it's a turning chain. Now I'm going to do my last stitch in my last, my last single crochet in my last stitch. Sometimes when you see your turning chain, you might think that that's an, also another stitch. You have to make sure that you don't work into that stitch. You only have one stitch left that you work into. So you find your V. And put your hook under it, you can check it, make sure you have two loops, pull that up and yarn over and then pull through. And now you have ten single crochets for your row and the same thing you're going to turn your work and chain one and begin single crochet all the way across. Now you can see down here at the end you have this stitch and then you have that. That was my turning chain so that's that stitch that sometimes looks like an extra stitch. If you're not sure, if you're like, oh, am I supposed to work into that stitch? Stop and count how many stitches you have. You can easily, if you have chunky yarn, it's, it's very easy to turn this into a scarf because the 10 stitches will make your project nice and wide. But you could do like a 20 stitch scarf out of this and just practice counting your stitches and going row by row doing single crochet. And if you're keeping your stitches consistent by working on your your shaft and you're counting your stitches you should have a nice straight rectangle when you're done so that's very good practice for beginning stitches and single crochet that is how you work your single crochet from beginning all the way through a whole row